Kalito, y'all. This is Danielle Naniwaya, and I am back to you with another video. Um, today's video is going to be a really um, short and brief video. Um, I wanted to do another video um, update on my um, my altar space. A lot of you are come to me you know um, asking about what is the proper way to set up your altar how is it supposed to look like and this right here um, is my current altar space right now um, it looks a lot different and a lot more cleaner than my previous altar space looked um, and I actually um, did a video around this time last year um, showing you guys how I prepare for rituals um, but the way that I pre prepare for rituals now is completely different than how I did in the past um, I um, in the past few months I have been really getting deeper into my meditations and I just been um, waking up with the sunrise and just doing a lot of um, intense uh, mindfulness routines and you know and I, I like to speak to mama universe a lot and just let her speak to me and give me the answers that I need and in one of my meditations a few months ago I received the message to clean up my altar and to uh, remove things from my altar that shouldn't be there um, I don't know if you guys if you guys whoever's watched the video the previous video I did on rituals um, I had a statue on my altar and I had a bunch of different you know I had pictures of my ancestors because you know that's what people tell you to do they, they when they tell you to set up your altar you know they tell you to put you know the statue of whatever deity on there and they tell you to put the pictures of your ancestors but mama universe you know informed me that to remove those things because what for one you know um, it's kind of like crossing into you know idol worship in a way because it's like you're giving this energy and power you know to images and you know I realized that mama universe doesn't need any uh, represent representation of her on the altar because mama universe you know is beyond um, the physical you know it's you know the source the cosmic creators creator source is you know an energetic source and there's no there's no physical manifestation or a representation you know that can fully and truly emulate the true essence of you know the source and the creator and then I also removed the images of my ancestors now here's the thing you know when you're doing your typical um, ritual and altar work you don't need your ancestors photos on your altar space you know you don't need to call on the ancestors for anything the ancestors you know are regular human beings just like me and you you know they just crossed over to the other side you know and what I realized you know because a lot of people are pretty much deifying the ancestors and what I have come to realize is that we are the ancestors you know doing ancestral work really uh, all ancestral work is is you tapping into your DNA memory and tapping into the Akashic records and because we are the ancestors you know you just really have to go within yourself to con going with going within yourself is how you truly connect with your ancestors and get answers um, regarding your lineage and your family history that's really what ancestor work is supposed to be about getting um, answers and clues and and the truth about you know your family lineage and you know your family history and whatever generational curses that you have in your family that need to be broken and also just giving honor to the ones that came before you that that's what true ancestral work is you don't have to call on your ancestors to do anything for you or to enact revenge on people or all the other crazy stuff that people you know do and you don't have to call on any particular deity either if you just go to 
um, straight to Mama Universe, the creator, Hawa. <laughs> if you just go straight to her, you know, straight to Hawa, you don't need anybody else or anything else because the creator is the source of it all. The creator has, you know, more power than any other um, deity. And, you know, I feel like, you know, um, a lot of people try to work with different deities that they really don't have a full understanding of. And don't get me wrong, there are other deities and entities out there that, you know, are good, you know, that, that don't have any malicious intent at all. And who, um, you know, you have different nature spirits, you have different sky beings, you have angelic beings and things of that nature. But I feel like until we get more knowledge on how to properly um, work with those beings and deal with those beings. We just need to go straight to the creator for now because first of all, if you go straight to the source, that's really all you need to do because I mean, Mama Universe, she'll know which deities are for us and which deities aren't for us. So, you know, if we just put it in the hands of the creator, she'll know um, which um, deities to summon to do whatever whatever we ask you know the sources over the source govern governs all of those deities you know so you can't you can never go wrong with just going straight to the source um so to get back into um uh, my my altar space you know it's a lot more simple now a lot more cleaner now um I pretty much have um, set it up to where I'm just strictly working with the elements and that's truly um, originally how our ancestors worked anyway you know they didn't have you know the all the extra fancy statues and you know they didn't have photographs because hell they didn't they didn't have cameras back then so <laughs> You know, they worked strictly with the elements. That's what root work is all about. You're working with the elements. You're working with, uh, and when I say the elements, I mean the elements of earth, wind, fire, water, and ether. Ether is the cosmic energy that exists within us and without us. You know, so like I have a bunch of crystals over here and you know you don't have to necessarily uh, spend a lot of money on fancy crystals or anything but just any you could just go to in your backyard and just get a, a regular rock you know to represent um, the earth element in fact some of these things some of these um, stones that I have on here are stones that I actually collected myself when I went to um, Lake Superior and Lake Michigan and um, the Detroit River and things of that nature. Um, this selenite I, tower I actually purchased and this Himalayan pink salt lamp. Pink Himalayan salt lamp is, it was gifted to me. And I bought this geode and um, I sell these amethyst stones. But this stone right here I found at Lake Superior or as it's referred to in our indigenous languages, um, Lake Gichigumi. And then I have this wishbone, which actually came from a turkey that, um, that we, my family ate for Thanksgiving. And um, me and my, my partner, um, we brought uh, our, our portion of the turkey home and we ended up getting the, the piece with the wishbone, you know, um, when I finished, I, I ate the last piece of turkey and got the wishbone out of it. And to me, that was something special because, you know, in our traditions, you know, the elders always say that the wishbone, you know, if you get the piece with the wishbone, you get, you know, good luck and good fortune and things of that nature. So I just kept it, you know, and I cleaned it off and I, it was something that I decided to add to my altar space, you know, um, you know, because of what it represents and, and, you know, having that energy of the turkey, you know, because turkeys are very, very um, powerful and hardworking animals. Um, so I just like to, to keep that on there. A lot of people don't realize um, that the animals hold so much, you know, energetic 
medicines, you know, so I I cut my turkey, my turkey bone, my wishbone. And then I have this natural beeswax candle um, that has herbs pressed on it, and, you know, and the candle, um, when you light your candle, that represents the fire element. And I pretty much am, um, have decided to take it upon myself to only to only use um, natural candles made from beeswax, you know, because you don't want all that synthetic stuff incorporated incorporated in your rituals, and you don't want to breathe in all those chemicals and stuff anyway. So it's just you know I'm just trying to keep my my altar space as natural as possible because we have to you know remember when we did our rituals we used to just do our rituals outside in the open where the elements were just out naturally there so instead of using a candle um, we actually lit fires we would get firewood and light fires and have our rituals around the circle fire. And you know, when you're outside in the elements, you have the earth element there already out there accessible to you. You have the, the waters from the rivers and streams out there, you know, the cosmic energy, which is always there. So, but when you're doing a ritual inside, in place of having a, a fire, you want to get a candle and you want to make sure that it's a natural handmade beeswax candle. You can even make it yourself. I have, um, actually have candles here that I've made myself and I, I definitely want to get back into making candles um, to do rituals with. And of course, um, when you're inside, you you know, of course you don't have access to rivers and lakes and streams on the inside. So, you know, it's good to just get you um, a jar of water because you want to have that water element because the, the water represents, you know, cleansing and, and, you know, the spirit realm. And then I have some other um, things like I have um, this seashells it's actually a conch shell from the Bahamas um, that also represent you know that water element as well as you know the that energetic medicine from the sea animals um, and you know the sea animals are you know pretty much some of the oldest creatures on this earth some of the most primordial animals because we have to remember at one point the earth was a, a dark water abyss so you know of course the sea creatures they were here longer than anybody else so they have that that old ancient primordial wise energy and that's you know part of the reason why I have this on here on the altar space then right here this is a goose feather that I found at um, um, at the river so I just thought that was very special so I kept that and you know the feathers we have to remember our people always wore the feather or, or even just carried the feather to represent the element of air as well as the um, to represent law and order and um, maintaining balance. You know, like Ma'at, you know, a lot of you are familiar with Ma'at from studying the Kemetic science. But, you know, we basically had the same principles over here in the Americas, you know, with the feather representing balance, law, and order. So that's why I have that there as well. Um, over here, I have, I have this cast iron cauldron. It's a little mini cauldron. And I also have an abalone shell. Um, I use both of these to burn um, herbs and things like you know um, my herb choice for today um, is white sage I'm actually going to get ready to um, do a ritual right after I finish um, right after I finish recording this video and this is my herb of choice today which is the white sage um, that I sell online you know I sell right now I sell loose herbs um, such as white sage, I sell cedar leaves, I sell um, Mayan copal and uh, mugwort. Um, 
And you could go on our website at www.okaohoyo.com and you'll see them on there. Um, right now I'm selling the loose herbs. Uh, I probably will start selling the bundles again because a lot of you love the bundles, the sage bundles that I, I made um, last year with the lavender in it. And so I might um, start making those bundles again and selling those as well. So be on the lookout and stay tuned for that. But yeah, like I said, I I have this cauldron and the abalone shell I, and I use both of them to burn herbs and you know, it really just depends on how I'm feeling. Sometimes I burn it in the cauldron and sometimes I just use the shell, you know, it's really all, you know, depends on how I feel. Um, sometimes when I'm using the, the cauldron, I like to light a coal, a charcoal disc. To put in there and drop the herbs in there and just let it burn and smolder um, and I also um, sell the charcoal disc um, we sell this charcoal disc on our website as well um, you can get a whole a whole roll on there um, and I also have um, my lovely um, quartz singing bowl this is one of my favorite instruments to work with oh my gosh um, a lot of times I like to open up my rituals with my singing bowl and so to start it off I'll just you know I just tap on it like this and just sounds in my rituals because we have to remember that you know the universe the way it operates um, mama universe really responds to you know the sounds and our voices and the music you know music is the universal language um, you know of the world so I love incorporating uh, my singing bowl and Anthony, um, my partner Anthony, he usually plays the drum because we have this really nice, um, this really nice medicine drum, hand drum that um, I that I got from a Lakota elder a couple years ago. Um, we I think we, we're gonna have to get a reskin though, but you know he Anthony, um, I usually have him play that. And, or sometimes, you know, he'll play the bongos because we have a set of bongos as well. And while he's playing the drum, I'm, you know, you know, playing the singing bowl and, you know, and he usually keeps playing the drum. He plays the drum throughout the entire ritual. <laughs> and it just adds so much high energy and frequencies to our rituals. Like, you know, because we have to remember the drum is like, the heartbeat is the heartbeat it's like our heartbeat and it's also like mimics the heartbeat of the earth because the earth definitely has a natural heartbeat and rhythm um if you listen closely to it so you know he while he's playing the drum you know i'm usually the one that's kind of like doing the chants and you know speaking in the language and just you know reciting you know <clears throat> A lot of our um, intentions to the universe and of course he recites you know his goals and intentions and wishes to the universe as well but you know I I'm like I'm pretty much like the what do you call it the master of ceremonies <laughs> you know but yeah you know this is pretty much you know it yeah I really hope that this video has inspired you all to um, clean up and declutter and update your altar space especially with this um, learning this new information on how to properly set her up that how to properly set it up that I learned um, just from listening to mama universe like if we just really just take the time to be quiet and just meditate and listen to mama universe and let her speak to us and we will find out so much more information. We will find out so much more truth that's going to be revealed to us, you know, because I really had to sit down and be quiet and listen to her to really um, get this altar space right and get the energy right and make sure that the energy um, in my altar space 
moves you know and flows the way it's supposed to flow and that everything is clear and that my intentions intentions are clear so yes please um and if you have any um questions or you know any more questions about the altar space or just um questions in general about um, rituals and in how our ancestors um used to conduct them you know just please please um put a comment um down below this video or you can even um inbox me on social media we're on instagram and facebook at oka ohoyo um you know the spelled the same way that the that this youtube channel is spelled and yeah like i you know i just really hope that y'all really truly do um learn something and get something uh, out of this and with that all being said it is a new moon tonight um you know like i said before we're getting ready to um start our new moon ritual to set in our intentions you know for the month so that we can see some things man manifest throughout the month and um so happy new moon to you all and i hope that um this video helps you to get your altar space together to do your ritual for the new moon or your or even the full moon that's coming up this month you know and that's another thing you know you have to um really um pay attention to the moon phases because you know uh, the moon phases are very important times to do these rituals you know for the new moon you want to set new intentions and set new goals so that they can manifest and for the full moon you want to use that time to um release things that no longer serve you and detox yourself and, and just to let go um and release so yes um thank you all so much for watching this video Please like and subscribe, press that notification bell, and I will see you all next time. Happy New Moon. Peace.